Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you for joining me today again. I'm really sorry that I didn't post any lectures in the last few weeks. So um, sorry about. Uh, I'm sorry for that, and I will do my best to um, to continue as promised before uh, every other Saturday new lecture online. Um, so in the last lecture uh, we were talking about the how to draw the uh, risk structures in the head and neck and brain tumors, and I forgot to. I forgot the brachial plexus and that's why I will start here by the brachial plexus. Uh, hopefully the next lecture will be the English version of the nasopharynx and as I promised I will do it and then we'll go ahead and continue with the rest of the head and neck uh, step by step later on. So let's hope I can do that later on. So for the brachial plexus the guidelines is there. I mean you can see the RTUG guidelines and you can use it to draw the brachial plexus. It's up to you if you are familiar with it. You don't have to listen to this lecture. What I'm gonna do today is I'll try to simplify things. Honestly speaking I'm, I'm personally struggling with the brachial plexus especially when I started to do it and um, nowadays most of my colleagues, junior colleagues are doing it for for most of the patient but when you start to do it again it comes quickly if you have like a clear uh, steps to do it so I will try to simplify things as much as I can for my juniors and if you are senior this is not for you so the brachial plexus before we go to the details so just to remind you that we are talking about um, uh, uh, roots of the brachial plexus, we are talking about trunks of the brachial plexus, we are talking about cord of the brachial plexus. It's dealing with the brachial plexus in head and neck and and when you see how we are drawing it, I think we are dealing mostly with the roots and the, um, the, 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 the trunks. It's very interesting to say here or to when you look at it, as you can see it starts from C5 to T1, but there is maybe some contribution from from C4 as well and T2 and that's why if you extended your brachial plexus up and down I don't think it's 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 wrong and there is a, a, a lot of variation between uh, the people the second point I want to stress on before we go to the planning system immediately um, I want you to be familiar with the scalene muscles the if you look at the guidelines, it will tell you you have to familiarize yourself with the scalene muscle. The point that I want to stress on the scalene muscle is that it has a thin initial part and then it will become thick and then it will become thin again to be inserted in the first rib. The anterior scalene has an origin from what we call it the anterior tubercle of the transverse process of the cervical vertebrae and the middle scalene has an origin from the posterior tubercle as you can see here from the, the picture posterior tubercle of the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and this is very very crucial so the anterior scalene will take an origin from the anterior tubercle and the posterior scalene as well as the middle scalene will take an origin from the posterior Tubercle. If you look at the scalene muscle, as I said, it has a narrow end, a narrow, uh, a narrow uh, start. So when you start to draw the scalene muscle, I will never start from here or there. I usually start from a very obvious line of cleavage between both anterior and medial scalene, and very obvious scalene muscle. So don't, I wouldn't search for it. It's there, and I will show you how to do that, which will be very useful when you start to draw it uh, quickly. So here we are, is the scalenus anterior, anterior tubercle of C3, C6, scalenus medius is from the posterior tubercle transverse process of the lower uh, uh, six cervical vertebrae C2 to C7, scalenus posterior, I don't care about scalenus posterior just that, that much. Um, very important point as well, the relationship between the brachial plexus and the scalenus anterior muscles. So the scalenus anterior muscles and the, the scalenus medial will, will in between there will be the subclavian artery below at, around the first rib and up there will be the brachial plexus. This is what we want you to know about the brachial plexus and subclavian arteries and scalene muscles. So the brachial plexus subclavian also will be between the anterior and middle scalene. I think this is very 
very important parts of the story and we are gonna use it the last thing you have to familiarize yourself with subclavian vessels but i think if you're doing breast if you're doing other tumor sites i think subclavian vessels is very easy i just remind you that the arch of the aorta will give us three main branches will give us the left subclavian will give us the left common carotid but it will give us the brachiocephalic artery and the brachiocephalic artery with r will give us the right common carotid and the right subclavian with r so that i think during the, our medical school we used to uh, use these types of tricks to memorize things let's go to the uh, to the uh, planning system and see what we have i opened a uh, one patient this is a uh, one of the training patients we have the oropharynx patient let's take it step by step so let's start by putting what we are calling it uh, brachial plexus so brachial plexus um, brachial plexus uh, right and brachial plexus left let's say okay plexus left yeah so it's brachial and let's see step by step how you can do it easily my planning system unfortunately is not allowing me to draw in the coronal sagittal view but if you have if your planning system is allowing you to do that just put a mark at c45 this is number one and this is your first step so put a mark just a mark at c three c45 so this is uh, uh, two three four and five so if you do it like that two three four and five so if your planning system is allowing you to put a mark just put a mark here if it's like my planning system which is not allowing me to do anything unfortunately um, good so what i will have to do is i will just uh, leave a mark somewhere here okay let's say oh, we're talking about the left sorry uh, so let's do it on the other side so let's put a mark somewhere here okay and don't bother yourself i mean don't worry about it now and then go down good go down uh, to t1 t2 so this is the second important point so the brachial plexus we will draw it between c4 uh, C5 and T1 and T2 and why we are doing this because we just mentioned that the roots was coming from C5 to T1 so it should be in this intervertebral foramina so this is 5, 6, 7, T1, T2 so something like that T2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, T1, T2 and then I have to go I'm sorry for that you can put it if you are if your planning system is with you now just put it uh, put a mark at this level and if you are doing on the left I would just put a mark here uh, just for put it anywhere you don't have to do the same just put it somewhere you just know that we are around the last uh, 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 slice and then when you start to draw the brachial plexus what you have to do is we have to look at the scalene muscles but as i mentioned i will not start from below i will not start from the upper cuts i will try to start from a cut where there is no doubt that this is my scalene my scalene so i will look at the transverse processes of cervical spine 6 cervical spine 7 and the muscles in front of it or sometimes it's if it's like transverse process of uh, uh, of uh, four or five how did i know that this is five because of the cricoid cartilage we know that the thyroid will end somewhere here at lower border of c6 so most probably we are at around c45 if you want to check let's check by the way i mean i have no problem if i'm wrong it's i'm learning with you so if you want to check with me uh, let's see maybe we are wrong so two three four five and six so this is a six seven of a slice vertebra so I, as i mentioned usually the cricoid is around the area of uh, c6 that but doesn't matter i mean i don't care about where i am what i'm saying is if you see the transverse process of the c7 of c6 you'll see a muscle in front of it and then look at the muscles carefully uh, let's minimize sorry 
okay and try to to familiarize yourself with these muscles you'll see two muscles actually and how did you know this muscle it has the same density guys with the other structures i mean this cannot be vessels here so you can see the vein you can see the artery and, and this is a muscle so this should be muscles yeah good so and then you try to familiarize yourself with the muscles around the transverse processes anterior or just uh, lateral to it and then you see it where it goes if you put it like that and then you go down and it's going toward the first rib I think we are talking about the, the scaly muscle you can see it started to be smaller 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 yeah and then it become bigger bigger so this is the anterior scalene and here is the and the the middle scalene muscle in between there is a space so I usually start whenever the space is very clear so I don't don't bother myself and looking and make it things life difficult make the brush five millimeter as the guideline would say and then start by drawing the space in between the scalene muscles if the intervertebral foramen is there you just extend it and that's it and then go up and down it's up to you if you go up I will have to follow the middle scalene because the anterior scalene with the upper cuts will disappear so I just follow this one so let's go up so this is the space if there is no intervertebral foramina so don't do it if there is intervertebral foramina the, uh, sorry if there is intervertebral foramina you just extend it to the intervertebral foramina so i will not this is below it so i will not take the upper one and then i will just draw the space in between if you can see the brachial plexus like for example this one then just draw the brachial plexus okay if you cannot see it just draw the space in between and try to be more or less symmetric as i said this will when you go up the anterior scalene will disappear so forget about it just fo just concentrate on focus on this side all your drawing will be anterior to the middle scalene muscles and whenever and whenever the intervertebral foramina will appear you just do it you just draw it in as you can see here I think then it's very difficult now to see the anterior scalene yet so I'm just focusing on my middle scalene muscle here you can see the the transverse process anterior tubercle posterior tubercle so now we know that the middle scalene will take origin from the posterior tubercle the anterior scalene take origin from the anterior tubercle I don't care about it but the, the brachial plexus will be somewhere here because it, I'm, I'm just following the middle scalene muscle so that's that's I think the trick that I want you to know about if you just follow you can draw the the, the 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 whole space most pro most of the time it should be posterior to the the uh, subclavian uh, uh, the, sorry to the the, the the jugular vein so it will be almost always posterior to the jugular vein if you see the space just do it I even don't care now about you, you can see that I'm not really caring about where is the anterior scalene yes it is there but it started to be very small so I don't care in female patients honestly speaking it's really really uh, very thin and you may not see it at all and this is my last cut usually end your in your uh, brachial plexus in an intervertebral front so don't start your brachial plexus without intervertebral from you start within an intervertebral so why is this because we know that the root when it comes out to be a trunk it will be within it, uh, the roots will come out from c5 i mean so or c or c4 so we have to be an inter uh, 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 vertebral from and then when you go down you feel it like it's smooth so it, you shouldn't move the cursor much i mean the cursor if you you keep your cursor in one place i mean if, if you can make a bit of adjustment yeah like if it's thin you can increase it if the space is not filled fill it and so on but the nice thing about what I'm doing is that you can see that it's more or less in the same place and it should be in the same place so if you feel like it's not in the same place try to make it as much as you can in the same place they will give you a beautiful end uh, uh, end uh, results and it will be very very nice uh, brachial plexus at the end so uh, when you 
when you go down now so now we are going down when you go down just focus on the anterior skin so forget about the middle now and just focus on the anterior skin and the reason why we are focusing on the anterior skin because the anterior skin will guide me to the subclavian artery you will see now that whenever this the anterior skin will start to to uh, disappear don't forget the intervertebral spaces when the anterior skin start to disappear to, toward the the first rib I mean you will see that it will show you where is the um, where is the uh, uh, just I don't want to miss it where is the uh, subclavian artery immediately so it will give you like a hint on where is the subclavian look at the so this is the anterior screen and immediately showed me where is the subclavian artery Whenever you see the subclavian artery, usually the brachial plexus has a relationship with the subclavian artery. You remember what we call it the vein, the vein artery and nerve. Here, usually the brachial plexus, I will start to do it posterior to the subclavian artery. So you can see the subclavian, the subclavian vein will be here. And if you cannot see it, what you can do also is you can, so this is the last cut what we used to do in the past by the way i mean like long time ago and you can google it and say um that we used to draw the um, the uh, the vessels as a surrogate of the brachial plexus so if you do you, you, the old trial the old rdg trial guidelines when we used to draw the brachial plexus we didn't draw it the same way as we are doing now we were drawing the vessels the subclavian vessels as a surrogate of the uh, brachial plexus so and this is not wrong by the way so if i did it something like that and i feel like i'm taking it generously um, i don't think it, this is wrong because you are very cautious and you don't have to uh, bother yourself and say that i'm doing something wrong at all you're doing something very good and you can still do it but we can stop at this level we don't have to carry on you just have to review it and, and the last thing I'm doing what I usually do after finishing and completing this I add a beam so if there is a beam that's fine and and I get what I call it the DRR so just close this one I have to change it to three dimension first okay so I go to the DRRs and I look at it if it looks like like as I you, I'm expecting it to be a step ladder type of things like can you see it here uh, I'm sorry it's a bit slow uh, do, do, do. I don't know if I can maximize this and just put me to to the it seems not okay let's see yeah so if you if you see something like this one two three four and five this is a step ladder um, some some paper like the last paper of Hall, Dr. Hall, Red Journal, uh, where there is the guidelines of drawing it, you will see that it started at uh, 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 four, four steps only. So one, two, three, four only, starting from C5. This is not wrong, by the way. So you can do C1, uh, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. It's up to you because there's old guidelines would say that you have to have and maybe a contribution there so don't don't be i mean it's not it's not wrong but i like i like it like that so that i know exactly that it's not wrong and i'm doing it should be very very nice and step ladder fashion let's do the opposite side quickly to make sure that what i'm saying is very reproducible and you can do it right break your plexus so the upper border and lower border we know about it already so i don't have to mention it again brush five millimeter yeah so the upper border c45 lower border t1 t2 and then let's look at the scalene muscles scalene muscle how do you know the scalene muscle transverse process will point to it the transverse process will point to what will point to the scalene muscles there should be an anterior scalene there should be a, a middle scalene and in between there is a space if you see something in between the, this is your brachial plexus let's draw it and start with it if you go up what would you do just follow what you follow the anterior scalene no you follow the uh, middle scalene don't forget this muscle do you remember when we talked about the nasopharynx this is the inferior bilio for my don't forget this muscle i mean it has nothing to do with us 
Usually also the uh, vertebral vessels will be medial to the brachial plexus, which is a good landmark as well. But I would I would say just familiarize yourself with this one. Okay, just familiarize yourself with the anterior and middle scalene. So when you go up, yeah, well, let's go up now. So let's go up and we will just do we look at this. Don't have to just look at the just look at the uh, middle scalene and you'll draw it anterior to middle scalene space in between space in between space in between is this interferometer formula no there isn't it's coming yeah it's coming so let's what is this uh, so yeah okay anterior to the anterior scalene i'm just drawing i don't know why it's like that maybe because we are uh, using a three dimension or something i don't know uh, so, so you can see here the anterior scalene is disappearing. Yeah, so you'll be misleaded if you're searching for it. Just follow the middle, and the middle will guide you to the story. So just be anterior to. I don't know why there's something here. <coughs> okay, middle to the and middle scalene. You are definitely drawing your brachial plexus in a good way and you don't have to worry much about it okay i hope this is a simple way uh, of drawing the brachial plexus again as i said you don't have to go high up you just can stop down to c45 i don't know why it looks like that okay and don't forget to go to the drr make sure that you're opening it in three dimension uh, go to the drr and okay oh we forgot to draw it below <laughs> sorry funny isn't it yeah you always do that so yeah uh, there is a missing don't know why it's like that okay so what we are doing now it's anterior anterior and as i said i mentioned if you feel like it's jumping try to correct it please so it shouldn't shouldn't jump okay and Oh, maybe there's something wrong here. Sorry, I have to close it. Uh, that's why it looks very weird. Okay, so when we go down, okay, when we go down, I will just focus on what? I will focus on my uh, muscles, which is the anterior scalene. So the anterior scalene will help me down, and the middle scalene will help me uh, up. Okay, good. So let's focus on this one. Yeah focus okay focus on this one good so you can see the brachial plexus here just draw it yeah it looks very nice don't know why. looks really nice yeah draw it draw it look at this one yeah look at the muscle yeah let's guide it by this one it will guide us to it will guide us to uh, if you have you want to draw the whole space by the way if you make it thicker i mean it doesn't it's not wrong at all uh, so and then we start to have the apex of the lung we're very close to c1 if you can see something here i think it's maybe wise to to do it to take it because then it will guide you to what it will guide you to to the uh, subclavian uh, vessel and here we are yeah and then you go posterior 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 yeah i think this is the easiest way to draw let's have a look if it's nice or if it's bad uh, you can correct it and you can go back and, and correct it and edit it and with eclipse uh, planning system uh, they have the capability as well to know exactly where the slice is and then you go back and correct it yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, for the fast uh, way you are doing it, so I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah. Uh, let's magnify it a bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. You just have to to continue. Maybe this one is better. Just have to complete uh, the picture. Let's see another patient, and then we can decide whether or not it's useful. If you are happy with what we did you can just quit now if you want to do with me another patient let's let's choose another patient and let's exit without saving because i mean we may need it later on so we don't have to do that let's have another training patient from our patients 
Uh, let's see parotid training. Yeah, usually we don't do. You may not need the uh, unless you're using the, you're taking the neck into consideration uh, in parotid gland tumors. Then you can use it as well. But let's do it for practice. So step one, we will define the interspace between C4 C5. As I mentioned, the, we have to start by an intervertebral foramina, so we will not start in the middle of a body of a vertebra, we, we will start at an intervertebral foramina. Step two, <coughs> step two, uh, <coughs> step two, go to T1, T2 and put a mark, C4, 5, put a mark, yeah. Okay, just a second. I usually change to bone window just to mean for much more for my eyes and then we count easily two three four and five let's put a mark here two three four and five and then go to the axial view and as I mentioned you just put a mark there and leave it uh, let's say we are gonna draw for example the left side first let's say oh it's already there uh, so let's close this one just not to be confused okay so uh, this one as well let's close it not to be guided with something and then we draw it together okay so left or let's say brachial brachial plexus left okay already used so uh, okay now no problem break your plexus left two okay and then uh, we so we put a mark here somewhere you don't worry don't worry about it you can put it in between the scalene if you want and tear to scalene medius now because you are more familiar I just wanted to simplify things but now you can easily do it and tear to the middle scalene two three four five six uh, sorry yeah. so we did the mark in the wrong way or what I don't know let's two three four five um, so the mark is not there yeah, so let's put a mark there. Okay, and then magnify this one again. And then, so four, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, T1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, T1, T2. So let's move the cursor there and go back as i said if your planning system will allow you to do it in a much easier way just put a mark there and now you know why i'm putting it in here because uh, i'm putting it uh, very close to did we wrongly counted this i'm just putting it very close to the subclavian versus or posterior subclavian versus to make it much easier but as i mentioned i would not start at this point at all and they can come back and correct it if it's wrong so don't worry about that now we have to go to the um, to the scalene muscle search for it let's see if he has a good scalene muscle this guy uh, scalene muscles how to look at it look at transverse process it will point to you to the muscles here so now what we want to do is to search where is the anterior and where is the middle scalene muscles there should be a separation between both so there may be muscle here so this time is a bit a small one isn't it so let's see yeah yeah look at this yeah but let's see when it goes down it's bigger thicker and whether or not it will go to the first rib yeah it is so that's 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 the scalene muscles so don't worry just f search for uh, cleavage between both middle and scalene and then we'll draw the space let's see this one so it's difficult is it a bit uh, maybe difficult than the previous one and you, you know the more you do the more you get more experience with the spacing between the scalene muscles so i I will assume that this is a space here, five millimeter, don't forget, and I will draw the space in between. By luck here, there is some vertebral, intervertebral uh, foramina. I can see something here, which I'm happy with it. If you want to extend it, extend it. If not, 
let's check usually it's two intervertebral foramen so we don't have to draw maybe five intervertebral foramen so because this will give you some kind of uh, consistency and homogeneity if you draw like uh, two intervertebral foramen um, uh, uh, consistently then this will give you a nice uh, you will end up by having a nice uh, very nice uh, uh, drawing for the brachial plexus as well which is a nice uh, trick if you want to use it um, because uh, you, you know it's it's good when you teach your colleagues or you do it with your colleagues to to do something very close to the book I mean you didn't you don't want to to imagine that you're doing it and at the end it's it's totally different from what it should looks like and when you go up we would just focus on the scalene yeah as usual the middle scalene i will forget about the anterior scalene i just uh, 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 draw uh, at the anterior middle scalene and i will focus on it do you know why it looks like that it, it draws something uh, alone i mean i didn't ask for this to happen i don't know why anyway and and then um, so this is my last cut then I can correct it now and uh, we just stick to the anterior to the scalene muscle yeah the middle scalene and the difference between the, the patients will give you different shapes of things so don't worry about that it just uh, you just follow the rules and you'll see that it's it's very very straightforward uh, I'm sorry that it's yeah okay let's make the same do the same add a beam if the beam is there then we go to the DRR and see oh we forgot to do the lower part of it so I'm sorry always I forgot that so when you go down the space I'm really sorry that's something happening there don't I didn't ask for this change to happen why well, it looks like that okay no worries <laughs> yeah stick to what we said anterior to the middle scalene mm -hmm. yeah let's do stick to the same concept here yeah. so I'm going down whoops why really sorry something wrong with the planning system is doing so now we have an opening so we need to extend it okay so another one so now we will stick to the anterior scalene and above we stick to the posterior uh, so the middle sorry and then this uh, you can see it here the brachial plexus can you see that yeah you can see it here the, here you can see it yeah it's really nice yeah so um, you go down and then you'll see that the subclavian is there oops why didn't know so the anterior screen will guide me to this up sometimes it, it's at the same level by the way and then it comes posterior so I, if i drawing this one here i think i would do it like that it's part of it here maybe and then it will start to be there yeah and then i will continue on like posterior to the subclavian let's have a look and the on this uh, on the drr and see if we are very close to what it should look looks like or not but i Honestly, I I feel like uh, it's not difficult at all. Um, all what you have to do is to just do it in a form of uh, like a, a rule, and then you see uh, if you are doing it properly or or not. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So you can see here there's something wrong there. So we need to extend it to the intervertebral from the one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So as I said, I mentioned before, some would draw it one, two, three, four. This is uh, the regional whole guideline, so it's not wrong. And then I can go back and do it. See, I mean, with 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 a better planning system, 
you can easily uh, go to the cut I don't know what's going on why it's doing that that's stupid sorry uh, but in the in other planning system it can show you the area where you want to correct by go directly there and and do it uh, I think this is a bit uh, away so and then it, it it's it's nice to to know where you are you know so long you are following the rule of the scalene when you go up middle scalene follow the middle scalene when you go down uh, which should we do that? When you go up, follow the middle scalene. When you go down, uh, follow the uh, the anterior scalene. Uh, yeah, we forgot to extend it here. I think this should do the job. Oh, okay. Sorry for that. Something wrong happened. Going down, so I will draw the opposite side quickly, and then I will leave you uh, again. I give you for today, and hopefully we will meet again. Click plexus, left two. I make sure it's brachial plexus. Sorry, brachial plexus, brachial plexus. Uh, right yeah two and I'll make sure it's uh, poly make sure that this is off I don't know what's why it's like that so the upper border and lower border we don't have to worry about because it's already there let's look at transverse processes of cervical spine it will point to the scalene muscles let's see if this is my anterior scalene and this will be middle and posterior scalene let's see if it's correct yes if it's going to the first rib if it's related to the subclavian yes it's there so this is my scalene muscle anterior scalene muscle posterior and middle scalene together don't worry let's look at the space and make a very clear one and then start to draw let's see this one is looks nice yeah so then we take our brush five millimeter take the space if intervertebral foramina is there Take it with you. If you go down, intervertebral form disappeared. Stay within the muscle. If we're going down, we will continue with this muscle, the anterior scalene. Forget about the middle and posterior. Just stick to the muscle. Just stick to the muscle. And if intervertebral foramen is there, you take the intervertebral foramen as well. As you can see, don't know from where it comes from. This, this planning system. I hate this planning system. Sorry for that. Oh, and then the vessels started to appear here. You can see it there, yeah. So the anterior scalene guided us to the the, 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 the nerve. I would say that the brachial plexus make, okay, you know, what we can do here, you just draw what you can see. So look at this, yeah. So it seems that it starts to be posterior and uh, uh, lateral and then posterior later on, yeah. So you can do that, by the way, and then here, yeah. And then it's something like that, should be there, uh, you would say, something like that. It's a bit of the most posterior part of the uh, of the van, if we want to do it like that. And then you stop. When you go up, you will forget about the anterior scalene. We will focus on the middle scalene and be anterior to the middle scalene. So let's do it. Space, sp intervertebral foramen is there. Space space so now the anterior scalene will start to be smaller and smaller i don't care about it uh, we have a guide lacquer guidance from oops uh, from the anterior middle scalene so i happy with it you just be guided with it and stick to it now you can see the um, the transverse processes you don't care just stick to the anterior scalene it should be somewhere there again there if you knew you cannot see it I'm 100% sure that it's there and when this is foramen is there you just oops there is something there I didn't know and then don't forget to go to the DRR sorry and see if it's very close to what it should be 
and if not just correct it and I think this is the easiest way to do the brachial plexus you can see it here it's not too bad one two three and I think there is a, a fourth one so this one looks like more to the whole one guidelines and the last thing I want to tell you about I think I hope this brachial plexus is very is very easy for you the last thing I want you to know about is what we call it the uh, uh, Timmerman trick. Um, Dr. Timmerman is a very famous, uh, 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 has a lot of publication in Sabre. So if you, uh, sorry, so if you if you looked at the um, of the RTOG trial of the Sabre RTOG trials, I mean his name is is almost always there. In in the planning system where you can draw. On the coronal sections okay so there is some planning system will allow you to draw like the eclipse ray station a lot of other system and the Timmerman he described it with the arm of the patient up so it's a bit tricky in head and neck patient but you still can use it and I used to use it but it's tricky and it's 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 very straightforward when the arm of the patient up the Timmerman trick would say that whenever you see, let's maximize this, whenever you see the neurovascular bundle start to appear, the neurovascular, mean, I mean the, the subclavian artery vein and the nerve will be around that, whenever it, you see it in between the clavicle and the first rib, you just take the, your brush and draw it roughly there so you can draw something like that unfortunately I cannot um, so I will just show it to you uh, with the cursor but you can do it in your planning system so just just draw something like that and this is a simple a si single cut by the way yeah so it's a very rough drawing what happens is because it's a single cut in the coronal section it will appear in your axial view as if it's a small line in between the scalene muscles and that's you'd be the guidance what you can do also is you get the cursor your cursor and put it in between the scalene so let's go to the a line where you, you, there's no doubt this, this is anterior scalene and and and, post, and the middle and posterior scalene so if you just put it like that so you can see that the coronal section will be within an area where the neurovascular bundle move uh, uh, lie between the uh, clavicle and the first step and then just draw it on the coronal section unfortunately the plane system is not allowing me to do that just draw one slice like that what happens is you see either you see it as a line very thin line here or you will see two dots so this will be your guidance for the brachial plexus you just have to take your brush and just draw it will be something like that by the way uh, sorry it will appear something like that it's either a dot like that and then you just draw it in between uh, or it sometimes appear as a very thin line because it's a very uh, single cut this is uh, what we call it the Timmerman trick it's a very nice trick very straightforward very easy and you may avoid the hassles of my my the, the RTUG way of doing things but I would like you to familiarize yourself with my technique because it will help you to to see the scalene first you familiarize yourself with the scalene muscles and the second point is if you have a hot spot even if the uh, if you didn't draw it you still can pick it up easily because you know exactly this is the area where the brachial plexus will be then you just do just do it like that so I, I hope this is not a difficult uh, thing to do please do as much brachial plexus as you can the more you do the different patients you will face the more you will be more and more experienced teach it to your colleagues teach it to, show it to your dosimetrist he can do it for you. I mean, you don't have to, to, to waste your time doing this anymore. You just do a few and then show it to your dosimetrist and then, and then uh, it's done. Um, brachial plexus, the dose tolerance is usually, according to Imami, is 60 
gray so I usually very keen to keep it below 60 if I'm irradiating the neck prophylactically or I'm irradiating an area away from a gross disease so what happens if you have a gross disease there so if you are exceeding the brachial plexus tolerance all what you can do you have two options one if it's lying on the tumor don't ever ever compromise on the tumor consent your patient saying that the tumor is lying over the brachial plexus we may exceed the tolerance but still the risk of the brachial plexopathy is less than the risk of leaving a tumor to come back and i will just give you the hint or the trick that i used to do in 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 the acceptance of the plan so if you have like uh, uh, if you are covering your your PTV with 95% you can still keep the hot spots away from the brachial plexus so just tell your uh, dosimetrist and your physics quick I don't want hot spots within the brachial plexus so you can keep it within the 95% ice dose line so if you are talking about 70 gray you're talking about 70 67 so we are not very far away from the 66 which is the maximum those that you can break your plexus tolerate and it's not it's not too bad the other trick is if you keep your dose within the 67 gray and you are treating your patients with uh, 70 gray over uh, 35 fractions the 67 gray over 35 fractions is less than 2 gray per fraction which means that you are biologically within the tolerance of the brachial plexus i hope you can understand that so if you divide 67 divided by 30 fractions you will end up by 35 fractions you will end up by a dose less than the 2 gray per fraction so the 67 gray may end up by less less than 67 gray i mean i hope this is um, biologically i mean because you're using uh, less than 2 gray per fraction yeah, i'm sorry i think I, I confused it for you so when you using 70 gray over 35 fractions okay you're using 2 gray per fraction if your brachial plexus is within an ice dose line of not the 70 it is within like the 68 or within the ice dose line of the 67 gray so the maximum dose within the brachial plexus is 67 this 67 is given over a, four, a period of time of seven weeks which is the normal fractionation if you are working with normal fractionation so 67 gray divided by the 35 fractions you end up by a dose less than two gray per fraction yeah i think this is more uh, clearer now and if you are working with uh, so let's let me calculate it for you for example if you have a calculator now so 67 divided by 35 end up by 1.9 1.9 gray per fraction is less hot than 2 gray per fraction so biologically with alpha beta ratio of 2 you may end up by less dose to the brachial plexus if you want to, to do it correct, uh, quickly I would say 1.9 plus alpha beta ratio of uh, 2 multiplied by 67 okay and this will be divided by four two gray per fraction normal fractionation as well as alpha beta ratio of two so this should end up by let's do it quickly 1.9 plus uh, alpha beta ratio of two equal 3.9 3.9 multiplied by 67 gray equal to 261 divided by four this will end up by 65 gray 0.3 so 67 gray over 35 fractions this will be equivalent to 65 gray so now you are still keeping your brachial plexus within tolerance and this is the beauty of the IMRT you can play with the ice dose lines and you play with the doses going to different structures I hope it's not very difficult for you and I hope this is a, a useful lecture if you like it 
don't want, don't care about subscribing but please pray for me and don't forget my father in your prayer as well and i hope the next lecture will be the nasopharynx in english and then i will do my best to do the rest of the head and neck and see you guys later on thank you